Hello, welcome to the Package Manager's Weekly Sync. Uh, I am Aiken Brain. I will be your host in the game of what we did last week, what we've locked on, and what we're going to do next week. Okay, uh, I have put a link to the crit pad in the chat. Um, if people who are going to give some updates could put their updates on that, that would be great. Uh, would anybody like to be a note taker? Thanks, Ollie. Cool. So uh, I'll go first. Uh, last week uh, we had a, a lovely meetup when Andrew came up to London, uh, and we went through a whole bunch of stuff uh, to do with the package manager's use case and the kind of things that we're going to need other working groups to come up with solutions for. So we were basically having a nice whinge and came up with lots of lots of problems. Um, so there's a GitHub issue with. Uh, kind of a write-up of the the notes that we took during that meeting uh, that's linked to from the from the crit pad. Uh, I'm not blocked on anything. Uh, next week uh, I'm going to be in Lisbon uh, to participate in the GUI and browsers hack and plan week, uh, which is going to be great because we can have some input into the kind of package managery kind of UI stuff that needs to be done, uh, of which there is some. Uh, and I'm going to help Alan shift uh, shift ship. Uh, IPFS version 35, uh, which will be cool. That's going to be me. Any questions? Cool. Andrew, you're up. Hello. Um, so, uh, fun week. As Alex mentioned, I came up to London um, for a couple of days and it's good to actually work in the same place as, as other IPFS people rather than just. Um, remotely uh, and we had a good kind of brain mold of some of the um, the blockers to shipping different things and where to potentially focus some energy to be able to kind of get some big uh, things moved out the way. Uh, Alex has written most of that up and I also created a blockers file in the package management repo. It's a pull request right now for essentially putting out some of the uh, kind of the problems that are stopping certain kinds of package managers, usually by categorization uh, of being able to fully adopt or partially adopt IPFS. Uh, and as we approach more experiments in more different categories, we can see how those things shake out um, and continue to add things and then remove them as they actually get uh, unblocked and are able to implement things. So it maybe becomes quite a nice area of um, kind of focus for how uh, can the other working groups kind of enable package managers con to continue to adopt IPFS. Uh, I also um, did some further experimentation with apt and closure mirroring, trying to find the uh, the hard points of incompatibility or impossibility. Um, and I've definitely found a few that are uh, kind of hard blockers and I'm currently running some more experiments. It takes up to 24 hours now to do some of these really large repositories um, to run the experiments on them. So I'm going to also try and find a slightly smaller uh, kind of set of things that we can mirror and actually like experiment from uh, as a consumer point of view rather than just as the the mirror slash uh, hoster of those things um, or as the initial onboarding because if it takes 24 or 48 hours to initially onboard a package manager but then is really quick after that then that's not such a big deal um, but if it does take 24 hours every time you want to do anything then the that often would introduce such a lag that it would be impossible to be able to um, keep those things up to date with like the whatever the mainline upstream package managers registries are doing. Uh, and next week I'm going over to um, Portugal as well for the, um, the meetup and there'll be a good number of people there that are interested in package managers as well as just after some of the stuff we talked about in London, the idea of having 
like an npm desktop ipfs npm on ipfs on desktop uh project would be um uh, an interesting thing to discuss with some of the other uh, web browser and GUI people because I, I haven't really looked into how that whole side of things works. So that'd be a good place to, to suck some knowledge out of people's brains. I also made a Docker image that should make it easy for anyone else who wants to try and run an experiment of how long does it take to mirror this closures um, registry. And I can make more but that one is small enough that you can actually run it within a reasonable amount of time and it doesn't need a, a ridiculous disk space to be able to do it. So I figured that was a good one to start with. Uh, it doesn't have to be in Docker, but it just means that you've got some shared kind of setup that other people can use and it's fairly forkable to be able to go like, like oh, I'm swapping out the Go IPFS um, binary inside of this and be able to share it rather than just manually scripting away on some server and it ending up in some weird state that is hard to replicate. Um, I think that's about everything. Oh, and the other thing that I wrote up uh, just today is something that's been bouncing around in my head around how we could potentially um, break the, the paradigm that exists in most package managers where you need an index because individual packages don't uh, have any knowledge or context of where they exist in the world. Um, and so the issue is in uh, the crypt pad, but it's um, the, the kind of TLDR is if a package referenced the IPFS hash of the previous version of itself, all the way down the chain back to the, um, obviously the initial release didn't come from anywhere, uh, then that any, package that you had would be able to give you an index for the previous versions without needing some external index, which could open up some interesting doors to be able to, um, to do other things, especially as you get more decentralized and more people run more indexes, uh, that it might make it possible to break that humongous index that a centralized registry would have. Um, so I'm going to kind of shop that around and see if other people think that's an interesting line of kind of experimentation to go down as well. I think that's it. Molly? I have, I have two questions. One, um, thank you so much for the, the issues um, repo or blockers or whatever, whatever it's being called at this moment, because I think that's super useful and super actionable. Um, and I, I kind of want that to get more um, visibility and headspace around um, kind of the other working groups so that they can kind of respond, react, and um, help contribute to it or help start percolating ideas in their minds about how that we actually might take a stab at doing that. Um, so kind of that request. And then that kind of feeds into my, my second point, which is it sounds like there's going to be a lot of people congregating in Portugal next week um, from across the project. And so suggestion, um, either physically while you're there like make a presentation that like talks about the research like aim it at people who maybe haven't been following along with this so like kind of go over the categories and glossary and like understanding of this is what a package manager is and what it does and here are the different categories um, but also then feed that into like these are the things the problems we are seeing um, like ask to this community record it and then let's just dis distribute it to everyone in the project so that we can all um, use that to feed into our Q2 prioritization of this is the stuff that we need to take on to really deliver solutions to the problems that package managers are seeing. Does that sound like something that's Yeah, that sounds for... like a great idea. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I can imagine there being a whole host of like um, different levels of feedback that can come from that, especially for the people that I've not spoken to any of this about. Uh, or that haven't seen it. Um. Any other questions? No? Cool. Are we done? There's a, there's one in the crypt pod that no one is oh. giving voice to, which is when public. Where is that?
It's right at the bottom. Oh, right at the bottom. There it is. You missed off um, the when public smiley face. I did the smiley face. <laughs> you can watch oh, that was a video smiley. after. All right, that's that's the extent of my emotion. Um, uh, maybe it would be interesting to try and uh, have it all kind of ship along with the Q2 kind of resulting OKRs. That might be a good time to be like, oh, here are the OKRs. They happen to align nicely with this group of package management related things. Um, but also, I guess the OKRs might shake out more interesting things that can align well with like feedback into the um, where package management should go next. That's it. I think like the when to go public will be when we can talk about like what we're gonna, what would what we want to do, what we're going to do, and how we're going to do it. You know, when we can answer those kind of questions, then it becomes a lot easier kind of, to kind of tell a story about what what package managers on IPFS actually means. I guess that sounds great. Perspective. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, David. Go ahead. I'd say sooner rather than later. Like I, I would say it's completely, I think you guys could have gone public a month ago um, Then, like, hey, we're doing research and it's great and please come talk to us and we're going to be learning about this space and trying to package up our, but I'm just, package up our knowledge and learning and understanding. I keep doing that to myself. Um, and, and I think that'd be great. So I guess my, my point is like, I think you could go next week or the week after or whenever, whenever you're ready to just like flip, flip the repo public, start putting the stuff out there. I think the readme you have is already doing a really good job of like, this is what we're trying to do. And we're doing a lot of learning about this and we're going to do work based on it. And that's going to be kind of landing as Q2 hits. So that's my take. But I'm curious if Dave has a different one. I agree with Molly. Um, and another, uh, I think like even more important to consider is um, exactly like which audiences we want to reach uh, when we go public, right? But because like just moving a repo by itself doesn't necessarily do anything extra to, in terms of like gathering information. Uh, it just means like we now can like discuss on, on some uh, public forum, some public venue. Um, one of the things that as a whole project that we need to get better or just get the habit on is actually using the multiple communication channels, right? We have the newsletter, we have the blog, we have Twitter. And so uh, Twitter is the one that like broadcasts to more people, but also like like it, it will not necessarily attract the, the specific users that we want to attract to the conversation right now. Um, a blog is typically um, a very useful resource because it gives you like a, a snapshot in time of like what our thinking is in, in like what our asks to the community are. And so we can then use that blog to then like seed into some other conversations that we, we want to, um, to, to bring to that repo. Uh, and then, uh, well, of course, like all the working groups are now thinking about the next quarter. So having this public or making it obvious for the community that research exists so that when the community sees the conversation around OKRs, they can like also relate to these discussions that are private uh, will be extremely important. And, and so, yeah, summary, just like, Whenever you feel ready, uh, like probably ship it uh, uh, early rather than later. Uh, but but also probably do strongly uh, consider like writing a blog post so that we we have some reference point to to send to people. And like uh, building on top of that because I think that's really accurate. Like you can also flip your repo public as soon as you want and then have a second moment where you point to the public repo that maybe a lot of people haven't seen yet because people aren't constantly watching the repos we create. Um, and then I know they should be, it, that'd be nice. But um, yeah, and then talk about it on like blogs and Twitter and stuff like that. Michael? Yeah, somewhat related to that. Uh, I'm actually running it right now. Um, I'm getting all the data from 2015 to 2018 on uh, the Docker ecosystem. So I did a big query query to find all the Docker, all the repos with Docker files in them. There's like 400,000. So now I'm getting like a subset of that data to do analysis on. And um, yeah, any findings that we have there could probably be a pretty cool blog post that people would be into. And then we could use that to sort of point at our other package manager work. So um, if we can get ready, like, what is like the right entry point for like, hey, you know, we're like taking on the package manager stuff. Like, where do we point people when we want to tell them that? That would be super useful. And then we can keep pointing people with more content. That sounds like a good set of things to do this week before before um, going over to Portugal, um, even if that doesn't necessarily mean that it's all um, chipped whilst we're 
busy doing other things um but we can always then put it live on the monday that we get back uh also thinking of reaching different audiences something that i've been pondering um would be to get alex on uh the podcast the manifest podcast because that reaches literally the like 500 people that are interested in package management in the world um it will require it's easy to schedule the call and do the recording it's the editing that's a bit of a pain in the ass um but uh i can always spend money on an editor rather than just wait for a volunteer to have the time to do it um when we would need to get it out there that sounds absolutely terrifying but why not <laughs> it's basically just me grilling you why did you do it like this? <laughs> Having listened to the Have past you? ones, Andrew is super nice, so I'm sure it'll all be great. <laughs> he is the Have constant host. Uh, Have you had Isaac Schluter on the podcast? No, no. The only NPM person we've had is um, uh, Adam Baldwin. Oh, okay. It was uh, um, I'll, I'll, uh, what do you call I'll, it? typo squatting oh right 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 right. yeah it was fun yeah that's that's a tough one that that's um yeah they're, they're doing a good job with that now though um yeah if you're interested i can bring it up to isaac i think he'll be at um, my daughter's first birthday party this weekend so mm. well at the moment we're every episode is stuck in editing hell uh like oh. it's easy to record and it's hard to get them out because neither me or alex have any free time to do that um and where yeah, this is, it, that, this that is, becomes the bottleneck completely. It's kind of painful. Yeah, that's why me and Nadia had the change log to our podcast so that we wouldn't have to edit it. <laughs> cool. Um, I think that's it, unless anyone has any other questions. Let's see some of you in. Uh, have, uh, this isn't a question, but it's a, um, a pointer. So uh, megahertz has put up two blocks of time for doing this um, kind of workshop that um, she and Matt designed around um, kind of how to encapsulate um, the, the set of things that IPFS wants to enable within package managers. Um, I know that Eric or Pork and Hector went through it um, along with, I was there for the first half hour and then had to jump, jump out um, like a month or two ago. Um, but it generally was really fun and it percolated a lot of really good ideas um, and, and helped kind of structure thinking. Um, so there's a session later today and then a session tomorrow morning. And then there's a follow-up session for anyone who last minute ends up missing a session or decides that they're excited about it after the fact for next week that, um, fit in at a time on Quan's calendar, which is always hard to fit into. Um, so those are, are things that, you know, generally it's kind of a little bit more open-ended, but also, you know, kind of mind mapping and from a user impact perspective and not necessarily from a, you know, development oriented perspective. Um, so it should be fun and interesting and um, there are holds on people's calendars. Quick plus one for that, having been like a ridiculously good use of time um, last time. We had some very interesting conversations and they had some mechanism for conversation guidance, which didn't have anything presupposed, but like was very good at drawing out the questions that we already had in our minds and getting them on paper. And it was just, it was really productive discovering what we even wanted. Um, I was really excited about some of the concrete proposals that were made in issues, mostly by Andrew, I guess, this week. Um, of like, I don't know if you actually use the word Merkle trees in your description of it either, but like, <laughs> implementation <they're>, detail. <laughs> yeah, but they're they're like extremely like just one layer under the surface. Um, so I think a lot of that description came up with like one way you could hang a bunch of Merkle trees around package management. And I think there's a bunch of different ways we could do that. And I don't know if I have a well-developed framework for how to compare them if we had multiple propositions like that yet, but it would be really cool if we came up with one. And 
Um, I think megahertz would probably be really good at helping us do that as well. So it would be good. Cool, I think we're all done by the looks of things. Uh, everyone gets six minutes back. Hooray. Uh, I'm going to stop recording now. So thank you very much. This has been the Packet Manager's weekly catch up uh, for March the uh, 19th. Uh, see you all next week. All right. Bye.